What's up everyone? Okay, we are going to install the Swift toolchain on Linux here today. Doesn't matter what version of Linux you're using, it's basically the same process, but there are a couple of important things to note as you go through and do this. I will point them out as we go along. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Firefox here. We need to download the Swift toolchain. So I'm going to go to swift.org forward slash download. Now, a couple of things to note that I, I've recently run into here. I am running an M1 Mac Mini, so I have the ARM chip and I am using Parallels and I am running the ARM version of Ubuntu 20.04. So I need to make sure that I download the correct package, right? I don't want the Intel package, I need the ARM64 package. So that is one thing you need to know ahead of time. Obviously you're going to know which chip you've got, whether you've got an ARM chip or an Intel chip. Make sure you download the right package. Uh, again, I'm doing this in parallels here, but you know it's also a, an ARM chip that I'm using here. So I have had some problems with the Swift 5.5 release. I got a feeling that this Ubuntu 20.04 here is not the right one for an ARM chip because I've had some problems running it. You may not, and it may be fixed by the time you're watching this video. So what I'm gonna use is the snapshots here. Right, because under Ubuntu 20.04, I know for sure that this package right here is the one designed for my ARM chip. So I'm gonna click on there to go ahead and download that. You need to make sure you download the right package. The beauty of this is you can use any version of Swift that you want, right? There's, there's plenty of other versions you can download here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and let this download. We're gonna speed this up in the video here because it's gonna take a minute or so for it to download these files. Okay, now that the file is downloaded, we don't need to have Firefox here anymore, so I'm going to close that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open up the terminal. I'm going to make this window as big as possible. I'm going to go to the Downloads folder and do a listing. There's the package I just downloaded. Uh, this may be a different file name depending on which package, which version you choose to download. Doesn't matter, the process is going to be the same. Next thing we need to do is extract these files. So I'm going to say tar space xvf and then I'm just going to type swift and hit tab so it completes the file name for me. Hit return. It's going to start extracting all those tools for me. Okay, there we go. I'll do a listing. Now, at this point, you may have a different folder name here, again, depending on the package you downloaded. But if I go in there and do a listing, you can see here are all the tools of the tool chain. And these folders may look familiar to you if you're familiar with Linux or using the terminal on the Mac, right? These are locations that you will find on your hard drive. Good two options you can do here. You can either leave these as a standalone in their own folder, which is what I prefer, or if you really want to, you can copy these files into those locations on the root folder of your hard drive. Personally, I don't recommend that. The reason being is these tools often get updated and by having them exist in their own location, in their own folder, makes it very easy to manage uh, those newer versions when they come out or switching a version if you want to because you've just changed the path. That's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna go back up here and do a listing. I'm actually gonna change this folder name though. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this from USR slash to Swift dash 5.5 dash dev, right? So I know which version that is. At this point, I don't need the tar file anymore so I can get rid of that. I'm just gonna rm Swift dash dev. And now I've just got my folder left. Great, always good to get your hard drive space back. Okay, one more remaining step that we need to do here. We now need to tell our system when I type the Swift command to go look for the binaries in this folder, right? So what I'm talking about here, if I go into the Swift, again, do a listing, and then if I go into binary and do a listing, you're gonna find the tools in here, okay? Now, you wanna make this super easy and convenient for yourself because you wanna be able to run Swift from anywhere on this machine, right? So I'm just gonna jump back up here 
and we can all we need to do to add that is add our path now we've got bash shell running here so i just need to add that to my configuration in my bash shell so i've got vim installed you can use whatever editor you like for this but you need to edit the bash rc file so i'm going to say vim inside the user folder forward slash dot bash rc whoops i don't actually i haven't installed vim yet so uh, i'm going to do a sudo app to get because i personally like to use vim i'm going to say install vim it's going to ask for my password there we go yep go ahead and install it you can use vi or nano or whatever you want but personally i like to use vim all right let's run that again okay there we go and at the very end of this file what i'm going to do is down here i'm just going to go into edit mode and i need to, to put the path so i'm going to say export path equals and now i need to give it the path for the files that i've just downloaded right so it's going to be inside my user folder downloads and swift dash five dot five dash dev and then slash bin all right that's the location again maybe different for you just get that path put it in there and then i'm going to say okay i'm going to complete this command like so that's what you need to put in all right with that unless I've got it wrong, we should be good to go. I'm gonna quit that. I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna close the terminal so I can really test this and reopen it. I'm gonna make this nice and big here. I should now be able to type Swift dash dash version. And there you go. We've installed the tool chain. It's all up and running. At this point, I've got an active install of Swift 5.5 uh, development version on my machine here. Fantastic. We can test this very quickly. If I just type Swift with no options, it's going to put me in the Swift REPL, right? The R-E-P-L. And here I can now just use Swift commands. So I could say like, let my name equal Peter. All right, that's set up. And then print that string, print my name. And there you say Peter. So that's it, right? I've just put some Swift in and it's up and running. That's all you need to do to get Swift up and running on Linux here. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Go ahead, like, subscribe, uh, leave comments if you've got questions or anything like that. You can also reach out to me, uh, Compile Swift, on any of the social networks. Also go to compileswift.com. In future videos, we're going to install Vapor so we can do some server-side uh, you know, Swift development on a Linux box here, which is probably one of the more common scenarios if you want to run Swift on a server. Hope this has been helpful, and with that, I will see you in the next video.